Hi, my name is Graham Smith, and I'm one of the authors that helped develop the learning approach to mathematics that is found in our textbook as well as the video you are about to experience. To learn more about our approach to learning mathematics, visit the web address that accompanies this video. Now, enjoy the video. Visualizing fractions. This video will help you represent a picture as a fraction, represent a fraction as a picture, relate improper fractions to their pictures, compare fractions by visualizing them, and compare fractions with the same numerator or denominator. Represent a picture as a fraction. Let's start with some definitions. A fraction is a number that represents a portion of a whole quantity. The denominator is the bottom number in a fraction. It indicates the total number of equal sized pieces in one whole object. The numerator is the top number in a fraction. It indicates how many equal sized pieces are shaded. Now let's take a look at some examples that will help us relate a picture and a fraction. Example 1. What fraction is represented below? Well, I need a fraction here. So I'm going to start by drawing a fraction bar. Now let's take a look first at the denominator. The denominator is the number of equal sized pieces that this picture is split up into. There are one, two, three, four, five, six pieces that this picture has been divided up into. So the denominator is going to be six. Now let's go to the numerator. The numerator is going to be the number of pieces that are shaded, which as you can see is five. So if I want to represent this picture as a fraction, I need the fraction five sixths. Example two, represent three fourths as a picture. Well, I need to start with a picture, and I can draw any picture that I want to. I think since I'm dividing this into fourths, I'm going to start with a square. So I'm going to take the square now and divide it into four equal size pieces. Okay, so that takes care of the denominator of four. Now the numerator tells me I need to shade three of these pieces. One, two, three. So that picture represents the fraction three-fourths. Now it's time to check your understanding of relating a fraction and a picture. Pause your video player and answer these guided practice questions. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Question one, what fraction is represented below? Well, I'm going to be representing a fraction, so I need a fraction bar. We'll start with a denominator. Looks like there are one, two, three, four, five equal sized pieces here. So the denominator is going to be four. And it looks like three of those pieces are shaded. So to represent this picture, I need the fraction three fifths. Question two, represent five sevenths as a picture. Well, I'm going to need to start with some sort of object and divide that into seven parts. I'm going to use a rectangle. You could use any picture you want to as long as you have this divided up into seven equal parts. Let's see. There's one, two, three, four, five, and then six and seven. So I've taken care of the denominator of seven. Now I need to shade five of these parts. There is the fraction five sevenths as a picture. Improper fractions. Let's start with a definition. An improper fraction has a numerator that is equal to or greater than the denominator. Now let's take a look at some examples that will help us relate an improper fraction and a picture. Example three, represent the picture as an improper fraction. Well, first thing we're gonna need is a fraction bar. Now I'm gonna determine the denominator. And to figure out what the denominator is, I only need to look at one of these pictures. And you can see that one of these objects is divided into one, two, three, four, five pieces. So that indicates to me that the denominator needs to be five. Now the numerator is gonna be the number of shaded pieces. And you can see that I have a few more shaded pieces than five. 
In fact, I have 6, 7, 8. So my numerator is 8. You'll notice that in my fraction 8 fifths, the numerator 8 is larger than the denominator 5. And that makes sense because an improper fraction represents more than one whole object. And you can see from my picture that I have more than one whole object here. Example 4. Represent 5 thirds as a picture. So I'll start by drawing a picture. This time I'll draw a circle. And again, I'm going to look first at the denominator. The denominator is 3. That tells me I need to split this object up into three equal pieces. Now, if I were to shade all of these pieces, that would give me the fraction 3 thirds. You can see that 3 thirds is not enough. I need 5 of these thirds. So I'm going to draw another picture. Divide it up into three equal parts. I currently have 3 thirds. If I shade one more, that will be 4 thirds. One more after that will give me the fraction 5 thirds. Now it's time to check your understanding of relating an improper fraction and a picture. Pause your video player and answer these guided practice questions. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Question 3. Represent the picture as an improper fraction. Well, we're going to start with a fraction bar and first determine the denominator. If we look at one of these objects, it's divided into one, two, three, four pieces. So that tells me the denominator needs to be four. The numerator is the number of pieces that are shaded and it looks like I have two more, so five, six shaded pieces. So that tells me the numerator is six. This picture represented as a fraction gives us the fraction six-fourths. Question four, represent nine-fourths as a picture. Well, let's start with a picture. Since I'm dividing it into fourths, I'm gonna draw a square because those are easy to divide into four equal parts. If I divide that into four equal parts, and shade all of these parts. There's one, two, three, four. That would give me the fraction four fourths. Well, I need nine fourths. So I'm going to draw another picture. If I shade all of these in, five, six, seven, eight. Now I have eight fourths. Well, that tells me I need still yet one more picture. I'm already at 8 fourths. If I shade one more of these, that will give me the fraction 9 fourths. Compare fractions by visualizing them. You can see here that I have a chart that starts out at the top with one whole object. And as you work down the chart, it gets divided up into smaller and smaller pieces. So you can see that if I divide something into two pieces, I get the fraction 1 half. And if I divide that into three pieces, I get the fraction one-third. You'll notice the pattern is that as we divide the object into more and more pieces, the pieces get smaller. So that if I were to work all the way down here to one-tenth, I'm talking about a fraction that, repre that represents a very small amount because I have this whole object now divided into ten equal pieces. Now let's take a look at an example that will help us compare fractions by visualizing them. Example 5, which is larger, 4 6 or 7 tenths? Well, let's start with 4 6. We need to first have the correct denominator of 6, which is occurring right here, and I need to shade 4 of these 6. So I already have 1 shaded. There's 2, 3, there's the fraction 4 6. The next fraction I need to look at is 7 tenths. So I need to come down here and take a look at tenths. I already have 1 shaded. So there's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And once I have these fractions shaded on this chart, it's easy to tell that 7 tenths is going to be my larger fraction. Now it's time to check your understanding of comparing fractions by visualizing them. Pause your video player and answer this guided practice question. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Question 5. Which is larger, 2 thirds or 5 eighths? Start by looking at thirds. 
There are two of those thirds, so I'll need to shade one more. Five eighths, I'm looking down here at eighths. There's one shaded, two, three, four, and five. And it is close here, but you can tell that two thirds is larger. That two thirds is larger than five eighths. Compare fractions with the same denominator. Let's start with an example. Example six, which is greater? 5 eighths or 3 eighths? To answer this question, let's take a look at a picture of each of these fractions. As you can see in our picture, both of these fractions have denominators of 8. That indicates the pieces are going to be the same size. So to determine which fraction is larger, we just need to look at the numerators and determine which numerator is larger. And so 5 eighths is the larger fraction. Comparing fractions with the same numerator. Let's take a look at an example. Example 7. Which is greater, 5 eighths or 5 sixths? To answer this question, let's take a look at a picture. You can see from our picture that these fractions have the same numerator, a numerator of 5. This indicates that five of these pieces are going to be shaded. So to determine which of the fractions is going to be bigger, we just need to figure out which pieces are going to be bigger. Are eighths bigger pieces or are sixths bigger pieces? You can see from the picture that sixths are larger than eighths. The reason that sixths are larger in eight than eighths is because we have cut this object into fewer pieces. If we cut an object into fewer pieces, those pieces are larger. So 5 sixths is the larger fraction. Now it's time to check your understanding of comparing fractions with the same denominators and comparing fractions with the same numerators. Pause your video player and answer these guided practice questions. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Question 6. Which is greater? 3 sevenths or 4 sevenths. Since the denominators are the same, the pieces here are going to be the same size. So to figure out the larger fraction, I just want to choose the fraction with more of these pieces. And that is going to be 4 sevenths. Question 7. Which is greater? 3 fourths or 3 fifths? Since the numerators are the same in these fractions, they both have the same number of pieces shaded. So I want to choose the fraction that has fewer pieces because that's going to indicate a larger fraction. So 3 fourths is larger than 3 fifths because fourths are larger than fifths. If you found this video helpful, I encourage you to check out our other videos that we have on YouTube or visit the web address that accompanies this video to learn more about our approach to learning mathematics.